Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. We're gonna continue our SDR series today and I'm gonna show you how to send text messages over radio using the RTL SDR. Now I have been using uh, this technique now for a couple years, not with the SDR, but just as a general tool uh, using something called APRS. I've done a number of videos uh, on this in the past. I'll try to link them all down below. So here's my use case. I'm out uh, hiking behind the house where there is no cell phone coverage and I'd like to let my wife know where I'm at. So typically what I'll do is I'll take my HT and then I have a small device that will allow me to use something called APRS. And I'm able to send over the airwaves, over just radio, to another station that is connected to the internet, the ability to send text messages. So she can actually receive it on her smartphone and she does not have to be a licensed ham. So if you're interested, interested in using your $30 SDR to set up some infrastructure for the purpose of relaying text messages, stick around. All right, guys, I've done too many takes of this already. I'm gonna to try to make this as simple as I can, but there's gonna be a certain bar that just needs to be met in terms of kind of grokking what I'm saying. So let's start with the station gear first. Uh, we have our primary station, which is our read-only iGate or internet gateway. And this station is gonna be responsible for listening to transmissions over the air. And when it sees a specialized packet, it's gonna use its internet connection to put that out onto the internet and send it off to a station that is capable of sending your text message to anybody in the world. Now, since the SDR is just a receiver and not a transmitter, we only get one-way communication. So we can receive RF signals, but we can't send RF signals out, which means I can send a text message using my remote field station, but I can't get them back from this particular station. And I think that's okay because the primary use case is for me to keep my loved ones notified of my whereabouts and my condition in the backcountry. So typically it's to my wife, who's not a ham, but has a cell phone. And it's for her to understand where I'm at, my uh, state of condition and maybe my arrival time. So, okay, on summit, ETA one hour. Pretty simple stuff. So that's the first station that we're setting up. Uh, the remote station uh, is basically just gonna be any handheld. This could even be your Baofeng radio. I've done many videos on this side of the setup before. I'll try to link those below. And then I'm using something called the MobiLink TNC. And the simplest way to explain what this is it's basically like an old school modem, and it's the piece that is responsible for uh, allowing digital to uh, be sent across the air. And to interface it, we have a small uh, cable that is designed for your particular radio. This cable is designed for my VX6R, but there are cables for the Baofeng and just about every radio on the market. And this is a Bluetooth device, so when I turn on my radio, set it to the APRS frequency and turn this on, all I have to do is take out my smartphone. This can either be an Android device or an iPhone. On the Android, there's an application called APRS Droid. On the iPhone, there's one called APRS.fi. So you pair with that device, and then so long as you're a licensed TAM, you configure it with your call sign and a few other settings, and you're able to send text messages. Um, it'll basically uh, be modulated by the modem, sent over the air with this antenna, and this little guy will pick it up and put it on the internet, and the text message will go out. So if you guys are still with me, I'll show you how to set all of this up, and we'll even send a demo text message. All right, so let's talk about the propeller head configuration. We're gonna start by configuring the APRS iGate on our laptop. So the first thing I wanna do is open up a terminal. And this is actually pretty simple. There are two pieces of software that you'll need to install. We won't cover those in this video, uh, but I'll put some references in the description. Uh, the first is RTL underscore FM, and the second one is Direwolf. Now I have a small script, and I wanna walk through the script really quickly. Uh, I will also share the script, and it's fairly straightforward. So let's take a look at the arguments. So the first program we're gonna use is RTL FM. 
And all we're gonna do is specify a frequency for it to listen to. So this is basically a command line SDR program. You can think of it similar to like the SDR++ application, but with all the fancy user interface stuff. And all we're saying is, hey, listen to 144.390 megahertz. And that is the frequency that um, APRS uses uh, across the US. And then we're gonna take the output of that audio stream and pipe it into another program. And Direwolf is a virtual uh, TNC. In fact, it is a software version of this little black box. Uh, you can think of it that way. And all we're gonna do is with the dash C argument, specify a Direwolf configuration file that is specifically designed for configuring an internet gateway. And then the last two parameters, the dash R and dash D, that's just more uh, audio settings. And those are recommendations by the uh, author of Direwolf in his manual and I'll link to that below. So all we need to do now is basically start uh, that little program. And like I said, I'll link it down below. And at this point, this radio now is listening for any signal on 144.390. So the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and take our radio and set it to 144.390. We wanna go ahead and turn on our MobiLink TNC2. And I'm gonna say this one more time if the MobiLink guys are watching, please get rid of the stupid button and add a slider switch. This button gets bumped way too easily and kills the battery. Now I also have that set to um, power output of 300 milliwatts. We are very close for a demo, so hopefully this works. All right, so we're gonna start our APRS Droid app. And the next thing we wanna do is start tracking. And uh, the light should slow down on your MobiLink TNC to show that you are connected. And now all I'm gonna do is go ahead and send a message. And there's a very special, special uh, SSID or station ID called SMS GTE. I talked about this in the past. And this is the station that we want to send our message to. So you have to put SMS GTE in the to field. And the format for sending a text message is the at symbol, your phone number with no dashes or spaces, a space, and then your short, short message. I believe it's under 63 or 64 characters. So very small. Um, optionally, if you go through the process of setting up your SMS gate uh, account, uh, I'll put a link to that below, you can also create something called an alias so people don't see your phone number over the air. Mine is actually set to YouTube. So at your phone number or your alias, I'm gonna put YouTube. And I'm gonna put uh, live demo. And we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And a few things just happen here on the screen if you're still watching the recording. You can actually see here it says APR message three for SMS gate. And then it says at YouTube live demo. Now if this all worked properly, we should have now a text message on my phone, which we do. So guys, that is basically it. Let me go ahead and stop some of this recording. All right, so there's one last piece of this puzzle and that's how do we configure Direwolf to act as an internet gateway? So I have a configuration file here. I have it called direwolf.sdr.igate.conf and that was the file that we had specified for to read um, as its configuration. And it's very straightforward. Uh, quite literally, this is taken out of the PDF document from the author of Direwolf that describes this process. So for the audio device or A device, it's basically null and null. This is typically uh, set to the sound card, but in this case, those are the values you need. Our channel is zero. Uh, my call, set it to your call sign. Mine is KT1RUN. Please don't use my call sign. And then the modem speed is set to 1200 bits per second. This is a default and technically this value is not even required. Now, the real uh, proof in the put-in, or I don't know, whatever. Uh, the real pieces that make this an internet gateway are this IG server and IG login. 
Uh, so there are multiple uh, internet gateway servers out on the internet. There is actually a table that you can consult. I'll link to that below. But mine is for North America, noam.aprs2.net. And then you need to be able to log in. So technically you do need to be licensed because you have to um, generate a passcode for your call sign. So uh, for my station, I want this to be kt1run-2. Um, that's the identifier I want to use to recognize this station as my eye gate. And then this number on the right, that is a passcode. And uh, I'll put a link below on how you can generate a passcode uh, for this based on your call sign. Um, the other pieces of information here that um, are optional, uh, I like to put an AGW port. What this would allow me to do now is that I can also launch another APRS client application like Yak, for example, and I can actually have a visual map and everything this hears, I'll actually see a position. So I also get some mapping capabilities, which is quite cool. Um, KISS port will also allow any application that can use KISS as a protocol. Uh, below, uh, this is optional as well. This is if I want to have this station beacon over the internet its location and a few other pieces of information. Uh, I didn't feel like turning that stuff on right now, but suffice it to say, really all you need is everything from the uh, IG login, IG server to the top. So super simple configuration and I'll post this directly into the description. All right guys, so that was a lot of technical jargon, so hopefully you're still with me, but let's talk about what we achieved today. So we were able to take our HT that has no internet or cell access and successfully send a text message using our receive only internet gateway. And as you saw, the configuration is fairly straightforward, just a couple of applications, one configuration file, and a $30 SDR. Now, I have received some criticism, or probably will, that this is not technically an off-the-grid solution because you need to have the eye gate um, requires that you have access to the internet. Well. Normally I would agree with you, but recently we have acquired Starlink RV. And while it is somewhat expensive, it does allow us to have internet access with considerable speeds at home and when we travel. So the use case now is I can go take our RV or even the Jeep with my trailer hitch mount, set up Starlink, and anywhere in the world where I have basically a view of the sky, have internet access, I can now connect this laptop to that Wi-Fi on Starlink and then use this as my RF receive station. Now, so long as I'm within RF range of this SDR with this HT, which is usually all the time because I'm typically hiking on a mountain, you know, five or six or even 10 miles out, I can still communicate with my wife. So think about that for a, sec for a second. Our ability now to kind of use a, a mix of modern technologies to give ourselves mobile communications. All right guys, so hopefully you've enjoyed this short SDR series. I do wanna get into P25 and trunking systems. I don't know enough about them. So I'm gonna to have to put the SDR series on hold. Instead, I'm gonna do a mini series on everything I love about the VX6R and why I think this is the perfect prepper radio. Um, and we're gonna go into some areas that are gray areas like using the Mars cap mod so that we can transmit on the FRS GMRS frequencies. Anyways, we're gonna get on, on this topic later, but just wanted to say that for those of you who have enjoyed the SDR series, I'm gonna get back to it, but I need more time to be able to wrap my head around the trunking stuff. All right, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. another radio that has a transceiver, so both receive and trans, no, no, don't like that.